right. Hey guys. Uh, so today, uh, just a quick video here. Um, wanted to show how to use Azure uh, Remote Management, uh, the, the PowerShell module, uh, to list out the limitations on your Azure account in terms of how many VMs and whatnot you can create, how many cores you can access, stuff like that. Um, so to get started, a lot of people will use just the old school PowerShell window here. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of it just because it doesn't give me a, an environment to work in. Um, so what I'm going to use today is the ISC. Uh, if you just right click the PowerShell uh, icon down at the bottom, come up to run ISC as administrator. That will open up this guy here um, and then we can get started. So the first thing to do is to run install module uh, Azure RM. Um, I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to click it, but it'll basically come in. It'll ask you, hey, are you sure you want to install this from an untrusted source? Hit yes. Wait for it to uh, run. It'll take maybe five minutes to do the install. Uh, once you have that installed, uh, then you're, what you're going to want to do is import module Azure RM. Uh, this will actually make it available to run those commands. Uh, and then along with this video there is a text file on the blog too that has the code that I'm gonna run um, I come in here and open it it's uh, get Azure limits uh, I didn't create all of this code uh, this was actually from a site called uh, for sysop.com um, or for sysops.com rather it's uh, it's an article that uh, Banky wrote I believe um, and uh, it does a great job. Uh, the only thing that I've added to it is I've added the uh, the login up at the top here. Uh, I suppose I could add the import Azure command up there too. Um, but I added that and then I also added this uh, export to CSV. Uh, you'll want to obviously change that from what I have and then depending on what uh, region you want to use, you'll want to change from East US to you know wherever you want to go to. Um, but yeah, it, once you have that all in, uh, it's just as easy as hit and run. The first thing it's going to do is ask you to log in. Uh, so go ahead and log in with whatever your Azure credentials are. If you're um, if you're running this on a customer's behalf, one of the nice things is is that because it just goes out and talks to Azure, uh, you don't have to like get in behind their firewall. Uh, you can actually run it and just have them log in over a WebEx or whatever, and you don't have to worry about installing all the Azure components into a server on their power or uh, into PowerShell on one of their servers. Just run it from your laptop while you're there or something. Have them log in. Um, so it basically exported uh, everything to a CSV file it's sitting out here on my desktop. Uh, if I open it up, it doesn't do us a whole lot of good because it's just hard to read. Um, but if you open the same file um, on uh, Excel, it becomes a little easier to read. So uh, this is what we're after. Uh, this is what you need when you're kind of planning uh, migrations into Azure and whatnot. Uh, and this is usually the limit that most customers hit right there. Uh, they only allow you to have 10 cores per region. So if you're failing over machines with dual or quad cores, uh, you're only going to be able to fail over, you know, two to five of them before you hit this limit. Um, so when you do hit the limit, there is a, another great article um, out on the web by the guys uh, at the Azure blog. And... Um, Basically, if you search for it, it's just resource manager core quota increase requests. I'll put a link to it on my blog post as well. Uh, but it basically shows you how to go in and walk through a support request uh, to request more cores uh, for whatever instances you want. Um, so basically, you open a support request. You say that it's a quota. Pick your subscription quota type cores. Uh, support plan, it'll have something listed there. Uh, and then basically select your uh, your ARM, the region that you want the, the cores to be available in. And then make sure you select the instance types you plan to use. Um, you know, there, there's no harm in selecting all of them if you need all of them. 
because if you don't, they will only upgrade the ones that you actually ask for. Uh, and then on the last page here, uh, you'll see your current limit, and then uh, you can ask for you know whatever whatever you want there. Uh, so definitely a good site uh, shows you how to do that. And then here's the PowerShell module that uh, walks you through getting your current limits to see if you've uh, hit those or how close you are to hitting those. Thanks for reading.